Quite a few things happened in Ahsoka Episode 6. Some pretty big things, actually. Unfortunately, those big moments are buried in a muddled episode with conflicting turn, bad pacing, clunky action, and overall, one of the weakest episodes of the show yet. Spoilers for Ahsoka Episode 6. Episode 6 starts with Ahsoka and Hu Yang travelling in hyperspace very calmly talking about old Jedi stories. They don't seem to be worried about the fact that Thrawn is about to make the greatest comeback of all time. We then see Sabine and Balin arriving on Thrawn's planet. Then we get the big reveal, the moment the show has been leading up to. Thrawn shows up and he's not very intimidating. I mean, with all that huge build-up, he just kind of strolls into frame and starts talking in a posh English accent. I mean, like, compare it to the first time we saw Vader. I mean, this was much more grandiose with the big army hyping him up and all the angles of him slowly walking towards them without showing his face. Then watch the Vader scene, where he just walks through a door in a small hallway. See which one installs more fear in you. I'm sure Thrawn's tactics and his rule is evil and he's a very evil guy, but first impressions are important and from what we see here, he's just not very villainy. I'm sure he'll get better though. So Thrawn returns, then he talks to Sabine, who seems to have no remorse for basically dooming the entire galaxy and instead just talks impatiently with Thrawn and just asks to see Ezra. I liked that in episode 4, she would sacrifice the world to see the only family she had left. It says quite a lot about her character. But now, she doesn't seem to feel guilt, remorse or any shred of regrets over the fact that Thrawn is actually back. I know she just wants to see Ezra, but at least let her feel the consequences of her actions instead of making her seem impatient and selfish, like she doesn't care for the rest of the world. But this seems weird to me. But anyway, Thrawn gives her the resources to find Ezra and she sets off. And the majority of the episode left is spent with Sabine slowly travelling through the wasteland, which could have been a cool Mad Max kind of sequence, but she just kind of walks and walks and walks, even seems kind of light-hearted and humorous for the fact that the fate of the galaxy is now unsure because of her. But yeah, literally nothing happens, except for one action scene that just feels pretty clunky and cheap, because you can definitely feel the TV budget coming through in the scene. Then she walks and then she walks, and after missing all the interesting stuff you could do in a desolate wasteland, instead of just making it a bland flat world for her to slowly walk through, she accidentally finds Ezra's friends and finds Ezra. Hurrah. They talk, they hug, she doesn't tell Ezra that she fucked the galaxy in the ass to find him, and they walk off. We cut back to Thrawn who hears that Ahsoka is coming and orders for them to shoot any space whales on sight. And that's it, that's episode 6. The best parts and best characters of the show continue to be Benin and Shin. They have two long conversations in this episode, which deepens their characters just even more. Balin wants peace instead of the Empire fighting the Jedi all the time, and he'll take whatever method is available to achieve it. He isn't really a Sith nor a Jedi, which just makes him so much more complex. Because on one hand he's working with the Empire, but he's not really loyal to them, he's just using them to achieve his goal. On the other hand, he was once a Jedi, which makes him fond of them. He likes the Jedi, but is willing to work with the Empire to get what he needs. Shin Hati is also very interesting. She seems troubled by Thrawn's orders at times, as if she finds them wrong, such as the idea of dishonouring their agreement with Sabine. She questions Balin about whether the Empire is truly what they want. When she mentions Balin training her as a Jedi, he corrects her saying that he trained her to be something more. And that's what I like most about them. They find the Jedi weak, but they also find the Sith evil, resulting in them training to be better than them, to be neither Sith nor Jedi, but something more, to be in the grey area, in between the two sides. It's that aspect of them that makes them the best characters of the show for me. But other than that, this episode wasn't very good. 
It felt tonally unbalanced and also poorly paced. There's no urgency to prevent Thrawn from returning, no sense of underlying doom now that he's back. And the characters seem humorous and lighthearted and just relaxed half the time, as if they don't really mind Thrawn returning. Overall, this was definitely one of the weakest episodes yet. Sure, we had major plot points, but those happened in an episode that just felt empty. I'd give episode 6 a 60%. It's not a bad episode, but I was definitely quite bored by its lack of substance.